Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. You know, this all started when I purchased an old Ford F-150 that needed a little work. The bed was a total loss, but the rest of the truck, in spite of the paint, was in really good shape. I decided to make a wooden flatbed. So before I get started, let me say a couple of things. First, I need to apologize in advance for some really shoddy camera work. I'm just not equipped to take video outside of my shop, so I hope you'll forgive me for that. Second, thank you to the many that gave some really good suggestions on how I should go about this project. But to ease the suspense, let me go ahead and reveal that I did decide to go ahead with Southern Yellow Pine. Now, I had enough white oak on hand to do the job, but I just couldn't part with that much excellent wood on a project with no potential to make money. Plus, when I priced out the hardware needed for the job, the Southern Yellow Pine became the definite choice. I walked out of the big box store with one, and I repeat one, bag of galvanized bolts and other hardware that was $175. That's almost double what I have in the wood. Anyway, on to the build. The first thing I had to do was get the bed off the truck. Tough to do by yourself but I did manage. To support the bed, I went with pressure-treated 4x4s since that won't be seen. I used galvanized nuts and bolts to attach the 4x4s, and I thought that these carriage bolt washers were a great idea. The washers bite into the wood so the carriage bolts won't spin. Very important since I'm doing this by myself. Using existing bolt holes on the frame, all of the cross members were nice and level except for the one at the rear, and I had to shim that cross member up about an inch and a quarter. Notice that I made grid lines on all of the cross members. This was just to help me keep things square as I started attaching the floor of the bed. I want to eventually attach sides to the bed, so I chose my straightest two 2x8s, clamped them together, and cut out notches where the 2x4s for the future sides will fit in. Once that was done, it was time to do something I'd rather not do while the wood is on the truck. I torched all of the wood to bring out the grain. I think this makes the southern yellow pine look a lot better. Before I can attach all of the wood to the cross members, I need to put some finish on the underside of the wood used for the bed. We all know that you should always finish all sides of a piece of wood to prevent warping. But this will be attached to the frame of the truck, so I'm not sure that warping will be an issue. However, this is untreated wood, so the bottom side will really need some protection. This brings me to another choice I made, thanks to viewer suggestions. For the finish, I decided to use equal parts transmission fluid and diesel fuel. You may think it's crazy, and I'm a little worried about it myself, but many a redneck have used similar finishes for years. Plus, it's pretty cheap. So I laid out the wood and gave the bottoms a nice heavy coat. This was important because I discovered I didn't really like the pink hue it gave to the wood. I thought it would be kind of a mahogany look, but it was just pink. So I addressed that a little bit later. But pink or not, it was important to give the bottom some protection. I got one end piece nice and square to the body and screwed it in with coated deck screws. My plan was to attach both sides and work my way to the center. That way, if I had to fit the center board or the two center boards, the bed would still look symmetrical. What I didn't count on was that the cab of the truck wasn't exactly centered on the frame. Don't know why. Trying to center the bed on the frame meant that it was off from the cab. This was quite frustrating and I went round and round about it but eventually decided the bed should match up with the cab. So, I finally attached the outer board on the other side and began to work my way in. I just used a deck screw as a spacer between the boards, and I used clamps as I went along to make sure the boards were straight as I screwed them in. You may have noticed that one of the cross members didn't extend all of the way out. This was because of clearance I needed for the rear tires. 
That will not be a problem though because of the side rails I'll attach with lag bolts. This will stiffen the end boards across the unsupported gap. I attach pieces of wood on the underside of the front and back cross members to hold up the side rail while I attached it. This also made sure that the cross members are hidden from view. Then I clamped the rear board in place that will hold the taillights, and used more lag bolts to attach it. I broke protocol here and torched it while it was on the truck, but then I realized that I would have to take it back off anyway to attach the taillights. Remember I said I didn't like the pink from the transmission fluid? I added a quart of oil-based walnut stain to the transmission fluid diesel fuel mixture and the color is perfect. So I gave the bed a nice heavy coat of the stuff. Many viewers suggested that I use used motor oil and diesel fuel for the finish, and that was going to be the original plan. But I couldn't get any shops to give me used motor oil, EPA violations and all that. Plus, I didn't have a vehicle with enough miles on an oil change to give me the dark look I wanted. That's why I went with the transmission fluid and why I eventually had to add the walnut stain. But I think it looks fantastic. Now I don't know what you call this part, but now I need to build the wall that protects the cab from the things in the bed sliding into it. I want it to follow the contours of the cab, so I figured out some angles and dimensions and cut the wood accordingly. Now I'm not going to give those dimensions and angles because your truck will probably not be the same as mine. Since I don't want a bunch of visible screws on this part, to attach everything I'm using pocket screws. I'm only using the pocket screws as clamps because I'm using construction adhesive to really hold things together. We'll see, but I'm hoping the combination of the two will not only be strong enough, but stand the test of time against outdoor exposure. Once the wall was put together, I torched it. Then I pre-drilled some holes in the bed so I could attach the wall from the underside with deck screws. This method of attachment worries me the most since it doesn't seem like it will be very strong. So I pre-drilled some holes for lag bolts that will go through the cross members. Hopefully the combination of the two will be strong enough. And the pre-drilling made attaching everything by myself easy. So here's the finished product. Well, almost finished. I still need to make some sides, and I'll probably get to that later this week. I really like how the barrier wall follows the shape of the cab, but doesn't obstruct the driver's view. I like how water beads up nicely on the finish. I guess the good thing about this kind of finish is I can recoat anytime I want to, and I don't have to do any sanding to get ready for it. One other thing for the future is I'm going to recess these hold-down hooks on each corner. I did this one, but I didn't like the bolt heads sticking up, so I'm going to figure out how to address that before I install the other three. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed the build. If you did, like and subscribe, and it'd be real nice if you shared this video with your friends. Also hope this gave you some good ideas that you can use for your own project. Thanks for watching, and there you go.